This is gonna be a fast one because I just got home and I'm losing the light. So learning to surf is extremely, extremely difficult. And especially if you don't live near the beach, near surfable waves. And, and so, especially as a beginner, there are a lot of things you can do. There are things you can do when you're not, when you're not able to surf, you know, surfers say, surfers say the only way to practice surf, the only way to get better at surfing is to surf more. And, and I've really found that to be the case. Advanced surfers swim to, to keep up their, their upper body strength for paddling and their cardiovascular strength. But, but I don't think that swimming is really a sufficient, it, it, it isn't a very helpful uh, way to train for surfing when you're not able to surf. So in between surfing, there are lots of things you can do. There, there are workouts you can do. I'm gonna, I'm going to demonstrate some. There are books you can read, of course, and and what I found actually to be most helpful is to watch videos of of surfers who are who are surfing in a way I'd like to emulate. And unfortunately, you'd be surprised to hear this. Maybe their surf videos online are not extremely organized, and and you know, there's this the. Uh, the gold standard in in surf journalism is Surfer Magazine, which was founded in 1960 and and has beautiful surf photography and videos. But I don't find their videos to be to be organized and uh, and highly watchable. And or for me, in terms of in terms of just wanting to consume a bunch of surf content, uh, I've looked I've looked around a lot, and and the best the best platform that I can recommend is is one called Nobody Surf. I love the name. I love that it's cheeky, but I love that especially it it captures what is what is the surf ethos in some communities that it's uh surfing's territorial and and for a lot of people there's a sense that that the popularization of surfing would be bad and i'm i'm definitely a testament to the fact that that it's really really hard to to get good at surfing and and to infiltrate the world and to uh to start cluttering your cluttering your lineups so i don't think that that should be a huge concern although i really i do appreciate that that uh that protecting the sanctity of home breaks and and uh, and the specialness, the kind of counterculture countercultural aspect of of surf communities uh, is 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 part of what's really special about the sport and the pastime. And anyway, so nobody surf. This is my this is my promotion for it. I can show it to you on my laptop now. I'm using all my devices. Nobody surf. This is what it looks like. Let's see how that shows up on, oh cool, okay. If you go to the homepage, I think there are new videos every day and they're short, which is great. This is a Santa Cruz Harbor, beautiful. They're just, they're serene and there's some oop, really nice music. And I have to tell you, the best thing about Nobody Surf is that it's an app and you can download it for free. And yeah, so part of the reason, you know, part of the reason I'm doing these videos is to challenge myself to be creative every day and to and to explore what's interesting to me in in learning to surf as an adult, but but also to just be generally helpful and maybe a little inspiring. And so one thing one thing that I do is I is I is I take big breaks from social media, where I completely abstain, and and I'm not perfect, you know. Sometimes I say I'm gonna do a 90 day cleanse, social media cleanse, and and I it lasts three days, but actually right now I've deleted my my Facebook, Instagram, and and Twitter, and and that's not for everyone. I'm I'm not recommending it for everyone, but I it's been really wonderful to 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 do experiments with myself 
on on kind of the shift in in attention and kind of what what kind of space opens up in my life when I when I get rid of certain digital distractions so just yeah to think broadly not just about social media but about our smartphones and our computers and just in general how we're using the internet and so for me one of the things that I love to do when I when I opt out of social media for example is to replace it with something like nobody surf so I now I have some apps on my phone which are beautiful surf apps and I and I and I watch them if I'm if I'm stuck in line or or you know anxious at the airport and and it's a it's really it gets me it gets me closer to something I'm passionate about and it's fulfilling in a way that frequently uh you know the others the others haven't been in my life and this is show and tell this is becoming a show and tell hour but this is also i pulled this from my shelf today this is jaron lanier's uh 10 arguments for deleting your social media accounts which i'm not going to review and and uh or summarize but but the thrust of his screed is that that a lot of a lot of the web now is so susceptible to to propaganda which we all know and and if you can feed if you can feed yourself with with the positive so many of the positive things that exist online or feed your passion if it's if you're building a business if you're trying to if you're trying to write a novel or or find a new job that that's less <laughs> that that sounds less fun but uh you know learn learn to play the guitar if if uh if you could fill your your internet time and your smartphone time with a little bit more of that and less grazing or or even engaging in in just habitual deleterious activities online uh, I know it can be really rewarding. I'm definitely a test case in that. I will admit that I've been, that I've used social media in unhealthy ways, uh, in plenty of unhealthy ways. And yeah, so I think that's everything I wanted. That's my, that's my video for the day. Thanks for listening.